This morning, if you have a bulletin and would like to follow along, the title of my message is, God has a plan. God has a plan. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, it sure is good to sit by you this morning. And then, and then tell him this, God has a plan for you. The three points that I want to share with you this morning is first, God's plan, I was about to, God has a plan for Joshua. God had a plan for Joshua. Number two, God had a plan for Jonah. And number three, God has a plan for me. In my bulletin, instead of writing me, I put Marty Darnell. I encourage you, if you're writing in your bulletin, to write your name. I believe, truly believe, God has a plan for you. It's my hope and prayer that this, when the service comes to an end and as we're all leaving, that we would walk out saying, God's got a plan for me. That we would all have a desire to know God's plan, that we'd have a desire to follow God's plan each and every day of our lives. Let's pray and then we'll begin. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to stand before these people and share your word. God, I pray that I will not be in the way. I pray that your word would speak to us. God, I pray that your will be done. I pray that decisions be made for your honor and glory. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Here, this is Jeremiah's letter to the, to the captives. Um, they've been taken out of Jerusalem and to Babylon, and God wants to let them know that I have a plan for you. And he, he tells them, he said, I want you to build houses. I want you to plant gardens. I want you to, your families to, to enlarge. I want you to have peace. I want you to seek for peace. I want you to pray for the land that you're at. You're going to be here for 70 years. And even though you're in captivity, I still have a plan. I still have a purpose for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. And I know the plans that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Just like the Lord had a plan for these captives in Babylon, I believe that God has a plan for you. This morning, this, this, this message isn't just for our graduates, it's for each and every one of us. It's awesome to read God's Word and to look at all the men, look at all the women, and see God's plan for their lives. A few that comes to mind, first Jeremiah, the one that wrote this letter in Jeremiah chapter 1. The Lord said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Before you were even born, I had a plan for your life. Isn't that cool to think? In this big, big world that we live in with billions of people, God knew you. And God had a plan for you. Before you were born to your parents in whatever town you were born in, God knew there would be a you. And He had a plan for you. In Joshua chapter 2, there was a harlot by the name of Rahab. Joshua had sent two spies into the land to, to check it out. And these spies had to hide, and you know where they hid? They hid in the house of this harlot named Rahab. God had a plan for her. In Luke chapter 19, Jesus is walking, and there's this tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus. He was short of stature, and he wanted to see Jesus. And what did he do? He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed his way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. Zacchaeus came down. They went to Zacchaeus' house. And Zacchaeus' life was changed that day. Zacchaeus told, told Jesus, he said, Jesus, he said, I'm going to give half of my stuff to the poor. And those people that I've taken wrongly from, I'm going to restore fourfold. You know what? God had a plan for Zacchaeus. In the book of Esther, I love the story of Esther. In the book of Esther, there was this super mean guy by the name of Haman. And Haman hated this guy by the name of Mordecai. 
And he wanted to kill Mordecai, but not only did he want to kill Mordecai, he wanted to do away with the entire Jew race. But do you know what? God had a plan. Because God knew what was going to take place. And he created this nice, beautiful young lady named Esther. And he put her in the right place at the right time. God had a plan. I think in, in Genesis, I think about the story of Joseph. You know, the, the, the boy with the coat of many colors. You know, he told a few of his dreams and his brothers hated those, hearing those dreams and they sold him into slavery. He was in Potiphar's house and Potiphar had this wife that wasn't too good and too nice and told a lie on Joseph and Joseph went to prison for a few years. He interpreted a few dreams and he finds himself there with Pharaoh. Pharaoh had a few dreams that Joseph interpreted. You know that there were going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. The seven years of good had came. And they had stored up, stored up, stored up. And now we're in the famine. Joseph's family is super hungry and here they are to come get some food. And Joseph finally reveals himself to his brothers in chapter 45. And this is what he tells them in Genesis 45 and verse 8. He says, so now it was not you who sent me here, but God. God had a plan. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. I love reading all these stories in the Bible. And as I read them, I say, oh, the Lord had a plan for Joseph. The Lord has a plan for me. I say, the Lord had a plan for Esther. The Lord has a plan for me. The Lord had a plan for Zacchaeus. The Lord has a plan for me. The Lord had a plan for Jeremiah. The Lord has a plan for me. You may be here today and you may be wondering what God's plan is for you. You may be scared. You may say, I don't know. But let me tell you, he has a plan for you. It does not matter how old you are or how young you are. It doesn't matter how rich you are or how poor. It doesn't matter if you are talkative or quiet. Wyatt said this morning in the text, he said, am I going to have to speak? I said, no. Wyatt was here. If I would have said, Wyatt, yeah, you're going to have to get up and speak, he probably would have said, see ya. No. But hey, listen, it doesn't matter how talkative you are or how quiet. It doesn't matter if you have a whole lot of talents or just a few. Are you alive? Is the person beside you alive? God has a plan. So let's look. Joshua. Joshua chapter 6. Flip over there, please. First point. God had a plan for Joshua. Let's read verse 1 through 5. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with a ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up, every man straight before him. So question. Did God have a plan for Joshua? Yes, God had a plan for Joshua. All right, let's keep on reading. Let's keep on reading. Verse 6. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the, Lord, before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets, 
And the rear guard came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpet. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. Hey, how many of you would that be difficult to do? Six days, be quiet. All right. It says, so he had the ark of the Lord circled the city going around at once. Then the they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpet. And the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. Verse 15. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day, only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. So you answered yes, that God had a plan for Joshua. Here's your second question. Y'all ready? Did Joshua follow the plan? Okay. Good. Y'all's good. All right. So had a plan for Joshua. He followed the plan. Let's see what happens. Go down to verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. So had a plan for him. He followed the plan. And what happened? The walls came down and they took the city. Let's go to Jonah. Jonah chapter 1. Verse 1 and 2. It says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. So let me ask you this question. Did God have a plan for Jonah? Yes, He wanted him to go preach to Nineveh. All right, let's, let's keep on reading. Verse 3. It says, but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So, yes, God had a plan for Jonah. Let me ask you this. Did Jonah follow the plan at first? No. All right. Had a plan for Jonah. Did not follow the plan. Let's see what happens. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us for whose cause is this trouble upon us. What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Verse 10, it says, Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. And then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more temptuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to re 
turn to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So, God had a plan for Jonah. Jonah didn't follow the plan. And what happened? He was on a crazy ship ride, and then he got swallowed by a big fish. When I read these two stories about Joshua and about Jonah, there's a couple of things that come to my mind. The first thing is, God's plan is not always easy. God's plan is not always easy. And in fact, sometimes it's pretty hard. Look at Joshua chapter 1 though. Joshua chapter 1. We see God's commission to Joshua. Joshua, we see that jo the Lord is telling Joshua how He's going to be with him. We see that He's giving him instructions. And in verse 5, it says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. How comforting, right? You, Joshua, you're here. You have all these people that you're, you're going to lead. With the help of God, you're going to lead. Hey, Moses is dead. You're the leader. He says, just as I was with Moses, I will will be with you. Listen to this last part. This is awesome. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Hey, in, hey, in chapter 3, y'all know they come to the Jordan River. It's flood time. You know what happened? God was with them, right? You know, you think about, I love that ending of verse 5. I will not leave you nor forsake you. God is not like, hey, here's your plan. Go see how you can do. God is like, here's the plan. I'm going to be with you. I want you to cross the Jordan. I'm going to be with you. I want you to go to Jericho. I'm going to be with you. Here's the plan. Isn't that awesome? You know, you read in the Bible and it's, it's not told to Joshua. You know, it's told at the end of Matthew when he's, he's told the disciples to go out. And preach and teach. I will be with you. Hey, listen. God's plans are not always easy. But hey, listen. God will be with you. God will be with you. Maybe God is calling you to switch jobs. Maybe God is calling you to, to move towns. Maybe God is calling you to you fill in the blank. Let me tell you, let me encourage you this morning. God will be with you. Not only do I think about how God's plan is not always easy, in these, both of these stories, something that popped up to me is choosing to follow or not to follow God's plan not only affects you, but it affects others as well. The choice, when you choose to, to follow God's plan for your not life, it's not just you that you're affecting. All right? You think about Jonah. All those other people in the ship, they were scared to death, Right? It didn't just affect him, it affected them. You think about Joshua. And if you go back to Joshua chapter 6, the walls come down, and Joshua gives them specific orders. You are going to go in, and this is what you are to do and not do. There was one guy that went in there, and he saw some stuff that he really did like, and so he took it, and he hid it underneath his tent. You read chapter 7, and what happens is, they're ready to go conquer this next place. They go to this, Joshua says, okay, go check it out. They come back and say, hey, we don't need the whole crew. We can just take a few of us and go take care of them. They took the 3,000, they go over there, and you know what's ha what happens? They get defeated. Because that person did not follow the instructions, did not follow the plan. Following the plan is important. Following the plan is Again, doesn't only affect you, but it affects others. Turn to your neighbor and tell them this. Following God's plan 
matters. And I know what you all been waiting for, the last point. God has a plan for me. Now, I know a lot of you would like it if all the staff could stand at the exits and as you came out, say, you need to move to so-and-so. You need to do this job. You need to go witness to that person. You need to do this. We can't do that, okay? We can't give you some specific plan for your life that just is for you. But here's what we can do. We can tell you a plan that we're, that's for all of us, right? I want to share a couple of things that in God's Word, it's a plan for all of us. First, I want to share God's rescue plan. You know, God has a rescue plan. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I'm a sinner. I have done wrong. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, is hell, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know what? The Lord knows. He knew, He knows that all of us would be sinners. And He loves us so much. You know what He did? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God's got a plan to take care of our sin problem. That's His Son, Jesus. You know what? God's got a plan for our priorities. Look in Mark chapter 12. Graduates, you're going to make priorities in your life. I hope and pray that you'll listen to these verses and make them the priority in yours. I jokingly, well, seriously, tell my students at school, three Gs, God, grades, and games. God, grades, and games. And guys and girls, not one of the three Gs. All right, tell them that. God, grades, and games. Well, we know family is in there, but I I just jokingly with my students. Sometimes with our priorities, we get them messed up. Sometimes we put things at number one that should not be at number one. God should be number one. God in his, his Bible, he says, in, uh, Jesus says in Mark chapter 12, in verse 30 and 31, he says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. I want to encourage you, when you think about your priorities, love God, love others. That's at the top. Love God, and then love others. You know, God gives us a plan on how to treat people. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12, it says, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophet. You could open up God's Word and find many other plans for your life. I told you at the beginning of this point that me and the staff, we can't stand at the door and tell you exactly what you need to do. But here's what we want to encourage you to do. Open up God's Word on a regular basis. Read it. Read it. Spend time with God in prayer. And listen. And give you some time to just listen to God speak back to you. Surround yourselves with brothers and sisters in Christ. Surround yourself with a good core group. And I promise you, if you want to know God's plan for your life, if you seek it, He'll share it with you. Okay? If you would, please stand. We get ready for invitation. I want to ask you a couple of questions. First, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, how are you doing at following His plan for your life? Are you listening to Him? Are you following the words of God that He has for you in His Word? And then the other thing is, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you to follow His rescue plan, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior.
Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you. Thank you so much for loving us and having a plan for each and every one of us. God, I pray that during this invitation, that your spirit just <laughs> convicts each and every one of us. I pray that lost souls will come to know you. I pray that, that saved people, if we haven't been following your plan, that we would be convicted of that and say, today is the day we change. God, I'm sorry. But God, I want to follow your plan. I want to do your will. Please be with me. Please lead and guide me. I'm trusting in you. God, work and move in this time. In Jesus' name, amen.